When Europeans first came to North America, they marveled at the productive and fertile landscape. They thought God had prepared a paradise for them. What they couldn't see was that this landscape was the result of thousands of years of sophisticated management by native people, what today we might call an advanced form of permaculture. Much of this history has been made invisible. Woodbine Ecology Center is working to bring back these practices through eco-cultural restoration to support their goals of native self-determination, regenerative enterprise, and decolonizing the diet. What are the practices that native people use to manage much of North America for thousands of years? The most widely used practice was maintaining a productive landscape mosaic through frequent low-intensity controlled burns. This practice created diverse habitats and abundant game and useful plants. It also helped to maintain and extend the prairies, an incredibly productive ecosystem. Native people also widely used horticultural practices we today associate with agriculture, burning, irrigation, weeding, tilling, pruning, and coppicing. These practices maintained savannas of oaks where burning and pruning controlled pests and diseases, encouraged high acorn yields, as well as an understory rich in medicinal and edible herbs. Many plants were harvested with techniques that ensured an equal or greater harvest in future years. Camas, an edible bulb, was maintained in vast meadows with rotation, weeding, replanting, soil aeration, and other practices sustaining harvests for centuries or thousands of years and serving as the basis of camas cultures. Many species were transplanted to suitable new sites. Some, like American plum, were transplanted far outside of their native range. Species like amaranth and other edible seed crops were sown after a burn and raked into the ground to ensure good germination. Some species were taken into gardens and farms and selectively bred until they became as dependent on people as people were on them. The sunflower, for example, had the seed size increase by 10 times over a thousand years until heads were up to 11 inches across. What does this mean for permaculturists and forest gardeners today? First, I think we need to give credit where credit is due. We need to recognize that our techniques are based on ideas that were developed for thousands of years by indigenous people around the world. We can support the efforts of indigenous communities to restore traditional management and bring land back under human care the way it's co-evolved with for thousands of years. We also need to study these practices, figure out how we can apply them to our permaculture and forest garden efforts now particularly our efforts to manage large-scale productive landscapes with low maintenance. It's also going to really shake things up in terms of the way we think about various issues from ecological restoration. What are we restoring to if, if people aren't around the coval partners of our landscapes? And what about our concepts of nature and wilderness and agriculture? For me, the deepest learning so far is that this land was managed harmoniously for thousands of years. And the goal, perhaps, of ecological land management is not to minimize our impact on the land, but to increase the amount of impact we have, but optimize it to have a maximum beneficial impact on the landscape around us. To learn about upcoming courses, publications, and fundraising for eco-cultural restoration efforts, including interviews with contemporary indigenous people who are managing plants and landscapes with traditional practices, visit the website of the Woodbine Ecology Center. Their efforts and our publications and upcoming edible forest garden course are focused on the Woodbine region where the Rocky Mountains meet the prairie with two very interesting palettes of species available to work with.